you have reached the end. I'm filming this on January, January, December 31st on New Year's Day. Well, not New Year's Day, New Year's, New Year's Eve. First off, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope um, it'll be, or has been, whenever you see this, an amazing one. I keep looking straight at the camera, not at this thing, but um, I hope it's been a good one to everybody and kind, and I honestly wish everybody a great 2023 um this is just a video to kind of reflect on the year and just what it's been for me um mainly because i feel like it's important for me to acknowledge it and it's something i don't want to ignore um before i get into everything that's happened um i want to get into some of the stuff that um we're not i nor well just in general we're just not the best things that happen this semester or year um <laughs> this semester of school this fall semester i will admit has been one of the toughest just eras of my life to live through um uh, in terms of just mentally and um physically just trying not to be um, burnt out or you know bullshitting everything um just definitely i tried to do a lot um and be a lot um at times when i probably needed a break or it should have been taking it easy and definitely let way too much pile up that was unhealthy um um i guess one of the main things i can talk about that happened that i feel comfortable was um during this period i had one of my first breakdowns since high school um which was really at the time embarrassing for me because it's just that's not really who I've become to be, you know, I, I can pretty much handle it okay. And um, one morning it all went out the window and I, I freaked out. Um, um, and of course this was due to circumstances that were happening at that point. Um, it just came to a head, all the stuff that was doing and it, had a pretty negative effect on the whole semester going forward um not that the whole semester was bad because of it but um it did lead into some consequencing stuff in terms of um, my progress um at school and stuff um and kind of <laughs> in general um i won't get into specifics but and coupled with that and with the semester as a whole um in terms of my progress um it happened and it turns out i'm gonna have to take a extra semester there at the college which is not the worst thing in the world to me but it was like damn you know i want to get this done and get this over with and um i messed up i i'm trying not to because i messed up and now i'm dealing with the consequences at the end of the day um, I'm a firm believer that you're the only one that gets yourself into your own situations. So um, I'll get myself out of it. And at the end of the day, I'm still going to graduate. So kind of trying not to be so hard on myself in that one. Getting back to the whole breakdown stuff, because um, a large part of this semester has been mental struggles. Um, um, this ultimately culminated in a in my opinion pretty horrible way <laughs> um i because of all that i had been dealing with um i hurt somebody that i considered a pretty good friend um and was a real asshole to them despite everything they've done to me and how nice they've been to me um to the to the point where I even insinuated that 
I would take advantage of them if the opportunity arose, which is mind-boggling to me to even say out loud. I can tell you for 100% of a fact, I am not that kind of person. I am, I am not. I have never once in my life taken advantage of anyone or tried to take advantage of every, anyone just because I thought um, I could. Um, it was a moment of stupidity and selfishness and me acting privileged and it disgusts me to even think about it now that I let myself get that way simply because of what I was dealing with at the time and I chose to take it out on someone. Um, and I honestly just really hated myself for it. Oh my God, this bugs. It was moments where, because of what I was dealing with, I wasn't choosing to think about what I was saying or thinking about how it would affect other people. And I said some pretty fucked up stuff um, to somebody else that really disrespected them. And all I can say is sorry, um, because that is fucked up. If anybody talked to me like that, um, for sure, I would probably call them out on it. Um, Um, I've been beating myself up over this incident for a while now, um, because it's just, it boggles my mind that I would let something like that happen. And to the person that it happened was who I really did consider a good friend, still do. Um, but of course that time may be broken, but all I am is sorry because that's all I can give you. Um, I know the person I am is not that. And I know, I know who I am. And all I can say is I'm sorry that I let that onto you because you did not deserve that one bit. Um, in fact, I have something that I wrote during that time, probably about um, a day after I had the confrontation with this person where they called me out on all of my bullshit. And, um, and, um, well, it may mean nothing now. I feel at least the responsibility to read it out because this was my true feelings at the time. And um, whether this person ever watches this, I hope they know. I wrote, this semester has been one of the hardest of my life. This has had the, this has had the most moments where I felt like I couldn't take it anymore, but I'm glad I'm still here. I would be lying if I said the negative thoughts haven't been present. Earlier on in the semester, I had my first breakdown since high school which was horrible. I feel the need to mention I did go to counseling for this. I did, I did talk to someone, so. Classes and the practice I've had to do all has just been weighing down on me. Sometimes it feels like I have to keep a certain perception of myself too. I know it may look like I've had most of it together, but it feels like I've had no time for anything. And at the same time, it feels like I'm not doing enough or what I should be doing. Needless to say, I've been going through it mentally and I effed up. This is to be truly transparent as well. I heard and disrespected someone I saw as a good friend because I was struggling and chose to take out my frustration on them. This is one of the worst things I've ever done to anyone. No one on the outside of my brain deserves what I'm going through or the fallout from it. I'm so sorry to who I hurt. It was not fair to them, especially with how much they've been a friend to me. I hurt them because of my own struggles and I feel like a piece of shit for it. Because rightfully, I was a piece of shit. To anyone else that has received the butt of my struggles, I'm sorry. To clarify, this is not an excuse, but an, an acknowledgement. Everything that's happened has just made me more aware of my mental health and more appreciative of what taking care of it can actually do. It also puts into perspective my true character, as it was called out to me on the day. By a third party who also knew about it. I know who and what I am. I am not the type of person to ever act out in the way I did, but it happened. Which begs the question, anytime it gets too hard, do I just become an asshole? 
It's hard for me to say as I am me, but because I've never personally been this way before. All in all, I am more aware of it and aim to be better. Which I believe is all any of us can really do. Again, I am, I feel truly sorry to this person and um, to everybody really, because I, I really do feel like I don't portray myself like that at all anyways. Um, but it is something that happened. It is something I'm not gonna shy away from. It is a part of my past now. Um, and all I can say is I'm sorry, but life moves on and I must too. That along with other stuff, inconvenient stuff that has happened this semester has honestly made the back half of this year pretty hard. Um, but to get in a lighter tone, that's not to say that it's been the worst fucking year of my life. To shift the mood here a bit, I'll, I'll start talking about the decent stuff because um, despite all that, the year has been pretty freaking crazy. I cannot douse it one bit. The year, oh boy, man. Um, this year, 2023, I hope I'm getting it right, has been the most important and hands down best year of my life. Despite all the struggles, I have done some pretty crazy and things that I am so proud of. Um, to run it down, hopefully I'm not forgetting some stuff. And in January, uh, me and our quartet, Los Padres de Clarineta Bajo, um, Bajo, and Quantum Spawn, my duo, which by the way, Los Padres de Clarineta Bajo, me, Kevin Paris, Daniel Troncoso, and Leonardo Palma. Quantum Spawn, me and Leonardo Palma. Goats. <laughs> January, we went to Arizona for the first low clarinet fest, ICA's first low clarinet fest. And I think there is a video up on the channel, my vlog of this, and then my reflections on it. This event changed my life. This event was something I needed at the time, in a time where I was feeling very kind of burnt out with what I was doing and just... It's something I needed so much. I got to meet so many people that now coming into the end of 2023, I'm glad to call colleagues and friends and people that I'll have as colleagues and friends um, for years to come. Um, got to meet so many amazing people. I got to meet my heroes, Squonk, Jeff Anderley and Jonathan Russell, who again, coming to the end of 2023, I would have never imagined I have the kind of relationship with them now, in which case I can always reach out to them for help or something like that. Um, I would have never guessed in 2022, I would be in the position I am now. And um, low clarinet FS is a huge reason for that. Um, moving on past the year, I went on my first Wind Symphony tour with the Wind Symphony because the last time they were doing that stuff, the pandemic killed everything. So I went on my first Wind Symphony tour with bugs. Not bugs. I... <laughs> Honestly, that tour took a bit out of me. I was like by the third day and four concerts played, I was pretty much like, I want to be home. Ah. But... It was honestly so much fun getting to travel and recruit and inspire students to want to come to Texas A&M University, Kingsville. It's great. Getting to talk up bass clarinet in Kingsville was great. Um, and just, again, you know, I think one of the most um, the coolest things I heard from that tour was... Uh, one of the a couple students came up afterwards and said oh we saw your fingers moving and we were like dang that's actually bass clarinet and i'm just like that's what i'm here for <laughs> we also got to go to team ea i'm sorry i'm looking at my instagram for like what happened man unfortunately we weren't invited back to team ea this year so they're lost <laughs> but we got to go to team ea that is something i i think we've said before but um, we want to try to go back to Team EA for years to come. Um, the reason being from that first one, um, uh, getting to go to Team EA was just amazing because it, it kind of isn't our goal to kind of make South Texas more appreciative and more um, informed about the low clarinet stuff. You know, bring more 
that, you know, show people in South Texas that low clarinet is cool. Bass clarinet can play more than whole notes and half notes and quarter notes and can play high notes. Ah. Honestly, amazing to see the response from that too. In terms of just like, you know, people that knew us and supported us and now saw that what we were doing I think one of the most refreshing things from the TMEA trip was um, just having people, especially like former band directors, tell us that like they were proud to see that somebody alumni from their school or something like that was was getting shit done and doing shit and going on the right track and validation that we might have not needed but definitely needed you know um refreshing stuff like that and full circle moments um during that trip is just <sighs> wishing to go to team ea during my area um trial runs in high school and then going there as a um, proposed artist and then just getting to play bass clarinet and music that is fun and that i love to play is one that I won't ever forget. First CMEA experience in the books as a performer. Hands down, one of the best I've had. What happened next? I played my last jazz fest in the spring. <laughs> I've always loved it. Um, and I've always loved playing with it. I'm hoping maybe jazz in the fall next semester. I just love jazz, especially with um, shout out to all of the jazzers this semester at time of you guys just inspire me to do, to want to fucking play that shit, man. Um, you guys are amazing. But jazz, yeah, that happened too. Oh yeah, cool, fun little thing too. We got to start getting our start and playing a lot more student recitals at Texas A&M University of Kingsville, which is so much, which was so great. It was, I mean this with a passion. I absolutely love performing. I love the feeling of right before stage getting those jitters and like, just kind of feeling the the kind of nervousness and then just getting on stage and forgetting about all that and just playing my heart out especially when i get to play with leo that is one of the best experiences ever quantum spawn is literally like a dream come true and i could not be happier anytime i get to perform on there fortunately not as much performance opportunities for a little spotless but that is because this semester was really the first one where we let kevin go off into the light i look up here because there's like nuclear winter one of the biggest and most important things in my personal um year was the bass clarinet intensive in san francisco run by jeff anderley jonathan russell and jerry simos i've made posts about this on my instagram and facebook but ugh, i can i really cannot say enough about what that did for me too another experience i needed I got to meet so many amazing people who were passionate about the bass clarinet. A truly refreshing just environment to be in. Um, and it's happening again this year. Be on the lookout. But what, like, I have no words. It was, it was literally one of the best things of my life. One of the best weeks of my entire life of just getting to play the bass clarinet and do something I love and sharing it with other people who loved it just as much just just that you know just being surrounded in that environment again meeting more colleagues and friends that i can hopefully call lifelong friends and colleagues and we met and formed joey 809 be expecting more from that by the way amazing guys i just got a shout out tommy chermulus i'm so sorry if i pronounced that wrong please correct me julian rymar and Henry McNamara, you guys are fucking badass. Joey 809 lives on. I cannot wait to see you guys in the future. And then about like a good couple weeks after that, we headed to Denver for our first <laughs> ICA clarinet fest, proper clarinet fest in Denver, Colorado. This was again another amazing experience because you're just surround we're just surrounded by clarinets and we couldn't be happier this was honestly one of the um greatest um things i could have ever asked for just <laughs> on borderline experiences i needed right that keeps coming back up it's just 
amazing stuff. I still regret that I didn't get to meet some people I wanted to and talk to some people about some things I wanted to, but the future is bright and big, you know. While up there, we got to go hiking around some of the mountains, which was just being in that type of environment and that peacefulness is, is it's something else. Um, it allows you to think a lot about life and it's just beautiful. Um, it, it definitely an experience I could not have asked for and getting to perform there was even better. I got to play contrabass clarinet, which is, I'm not a contrabass clarinetter, clarinetter. Nonetheless, an amazing experience that I will never forget. Two, we had Kevin send off to, um, Pennsylvania uh, for his master's for grad school at um, Penn State which again all I can say is Kevin you are one of the most amazing human beings I have ever met and I am all of us really are fortunate that we get to play with you and call you a friend so we wish nothing to you from the best and uh, from the best we wish nothing but the best for you and uh, cannot wait to see where you go and um, we will play again love you Kevin I know I talked about the negatives beforehand, and it was mostly from this semester, but after that, we got into the fall semester of school, and it was the first time, I can say this, that I auditioned on B-flat clarinet for Wind Symphony, and I actually made it on B-flat clarinet, kind of as a second bass, but sub the second bass. Honestly, I could not be prouder with how it's all turned out this semester as a clarinetist in the Wind Symphony. It's just... If you know me, I am a very insecure B-flat clarinetist player. Um, I am, bass clarinet is where I'm at. It's my home, it's the instrument I feel like I can step on and sound pretty good at. I am a bass clarinetist. But this was a semester I really tried on B-flat clarinet and um, I could not say I'm not I couldn't be prouder of my progress. I'm nowhere where I want to be. Um, I know I could be at a much better pace, but in terms of the work I've done this semester, um, I'm proud, you know. I've come a long way with my B-flat playing. There was a point where I would squeak every time I switched registers and tonguing was absolutely horrendous. And now I can actually make a decent quality sound for the most part. Um, and yeah, just... It, amazing semester in terms of the band life and just overall um in terms of my playing and musicianship this year is just I can see one of the biggest improvements I've had um in terms of myself this year it's just you know fixing up becoming a better bass clarinetist becoming a better clarinetist I can wholeheartedly say in full terms of my musicianship I am nowhere where I want to be, but I am extremely proud in myself for doing as much as I have. Um, that's all I can really say. Um, I have done a lot this semester in terms of playing and just my bass clarinet progress. I am so excited for what 2024 has to offer, simply. A little tidbit too, in our studio this semester, so many people were showing um, interest in bass clarinet and that was great too. I got to almost lead slash lead a bass clarinet choir. Mm -hmm. I ran rehearsals um, and then coach semi a mini clarinet bass clarinet quartet which was cool too and yeah just amazing stuff that happened this year. I do also want to shout out a I guess organization that has been brewed because of an ongoing problem clary quality please if you see them anywhere i think they facebook the facebook group is the most notable one that i know but please support them uh it's i think it's honestly and this is probably going to be one of the only times um i will say it openly because uh, it's it's stupid to me that i even have to say it but it's stupid to me that there are still ignorant freaking white dudes out there that are getting offended anytime a margin a marginalized group or even a woman wants to argue that stuff isn't fair it's not fair that's the reason they're arguing um maybe if we here's a crazy concept maybe if we just listen and heard them out and then talked about it stuff could get resolved crazy fucking idea right anyways 
Clary quality all the way. Everybody plays clarinet. Everybody plays clarinet. And nobody should be judged or have their opportunities lessened or taken away or made unfair simply because of the color of their skin or what's in between their legs or whatever. That bullshit doesn't matter. And it boggles my mind that some stupid bullshit like that happens in 2023. And I hope it fucking stops in 2024. It's so sad to see that type of stuff on my feed. Um, all I can say is I will continue myself in whatever way I can to promote representation of everybody and that everybody gets the opportunities they deserve and that everybody who is an asshole gets what's coming to them. I really wanted to spit that in there because it's just clear equality, man. Let's, let's, let's be unified. Let's do this together, you know? I think that's about a general gist of the sum up of 2024. I want to thank everybody who was there that talked about it and helped me through some of my harder times and just, you know, my family, friends, colleagues, um, a couple of certain friends who I won't name directly off because I will 100% miss some people, but you know who you are. Y'all mean the world to me, and y'all are always in here for me. I appreciate everything. I want to expend a huge special thank you to Dr. Andrea Voss Roxport. I hope I pronounced your name right. My professor at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Half of the stuff our quartet and duo has done has been because of your support and guidance, and we could not be more appreciative. I could not be more appreciative. You are one of the most badasses person badass is people i don't know if i'm even phrasing this anymore correctly but you are a badass and i am so thankful to have you in my life thank you for everything you've done yeah thank you to everyone really overall my conclusion about 2024 i have not been the most perfect person and i don't think i ever will be the most perfect person um but And I will not portray myself as, a per as the most perfect person. Um, in 2024, I hope to be better, to continue to be better, to just try to promote being better, um, especially with all these opportunities that are coming. Um, I can honestly say for the first time in my life, Wholeheartedly, I am excited <laughs> to live life in 2024. I am so excited and so ready. It feels like for the first time in my life to see what the future has. And so excited for the opportunities that are coming. Um, if, you, if you're not um, in the know, recently Los Padres got accepted to Dublin to go perform in Dublin, Ireland for ICA 2024. It's freaking amazing kind of insane because we still got to figure out the logistics of all of that but it will get figured out and you will see us there making our international debut anyways i feel like i rambled a little bit um so um this all just to say um happy new year's to everybody um i hope your 2024 is filled is just filled to the brim with everything you want to achieve and do and just i just hope 2024 for the rest of you is an absolutely amazing one as i hope it will be for me um shit's gonna happen that's all i can say thank you all uh, for following me for now if you have um um to the rest of you that hopefully um join on um i hope it'll be a fun ride for you um yeah i cannot wait to connect with more people and just do way more stuff in 2024 anyways um this has been a pretty long one so far but thank you all for watching and get ready for 2024 i've been ready i'll see you all